here. So again, talking a little bit today about uh, differentiated, personalized, and adaptive learning. And so the reason we really want to take a look at this topic, not only is adaptive learning one of the hot topics that we're coming into for 2016, 2017, uh, really looking at in the future, we've had a lot of partners that have started to explore this, um, these different platforms as uh, potential opportunities for them to really uh, address some of the key challenges that they're facing. And so um, really what we're hearing our partners really want to solve for is how to reduce the learning overload and fatigue that a lot of their participants are receiving, and then how to increase the relevancy of the materials that are provided to the learners, uh, tying back to the job, the intended performance outcome, et cetera, and then how to think about really in, in speeding up that transition from learning to performance in the workplace. And what we're seeing is that there's a lot of innovations in the technology and the platforms that are supporting this, especially adaptive learning, that are really going a long way to kind of help drive these goals. So um, what we want to do is kind of talk a little bit about each of these, but uh, before we jump right into adaptive learning, I did want to take the opportunity to talk a little bit about differentiated, personalized, and adaptive. And what we're finding is with a lot of powerful terms is that they become ubiquitous and they apply to a lot of things. So I think it's important to kind of take a step back and, and separate out the difference between differentiated, personalized, or adaptive. And so what I'm showing here is just a quick alignment and, and you're thinking about how the customer custom learner experience, uh, the return on the investment for the time based on their prior knowledge, uh, skills or abilities, and how the systems are able to respond to those, and then looking uh, opposed to that, the investment required, whether it's a uh, addition of a new platform, a change in the designer development strategy, or basically the threshold of data required to get into and really make uh, those algorithms really work. So when you look at these, you have some uh, differing levels of return on an investment around that uh, learner experience where you get to more customize, but also increases in the level of investment that you have to put in to be able to, to receive those. So in general, that's how these three lay out. When we look at differentiated learning, and it's important to kind of separate these out, this is one strategy and this is probably one of the most common strategies folks currently employ to really reduce and target content for specific areas. So if you think about it, these are really preset categories of learners mapped to a curriculum or a sequence of assets. The categories can be role specific, performance or task specific, or competency specific. So the concept here in the middle is when you're really looking at you know, the difference between learning category one or learner category two, they receive different elements of a preset curriculum. And what you're looking about of all of the available content to them, they're only receiving the content that is relevant to what it is that they need to be able to do. Now, in general, there's a preset sequencing in that curricula. It's generally available to them uh, as they're, they're trying to achieve their learning goals uh, in a set system. And those are often displayed off of an LMS. So what does that, that experience sound like? So if you're, we've got Sharon down here. So for example, Sharon, she's a re recently promoted seller in a bank branch, and this is somebody that would talk to you about uh, a range of products and services at the bank. They're able to kind of uh, come in and open a checking account or provide other services. And uh, she has been recently promoted. She needs to learn about the bank's products and services uh, so she can talk knowledgeably, meet the customer's needs. Uh, she is assigned the curricula for internal new to sell a role. And the differentiation here is that based on her prior experience within the company, she only needs to complete the new seller curricula and associated courses related to the products, but not to the information that she should have already mastered as a current employee. For example, background about the organization, et cetera. So in a sense, rather than just coming back and hitting her with everything as a new employee would have to take beginning to end, she's able to have a much more structured approach uh, and reduces or streamlines her time to it. So differentiated learning is probably one the first step in that pathway. When you think about this, this really is a content first strategy. It's focused around the content and the matching it to the roles. The learner experience is consistent in terms of time and content exposure. Everybody uh, within that category will generally have the same duration of time and the same exposure to content. And it is supported through the LMS platforms. And it does require an accurate mapping of the roles of tasks and the accurate assignment of targets and all. That really is the key for success. And it really is, when we're looking 
looking at success in the system, it's dependent upon the consistent exposure of the content. While testing may be part of the strategy, uh, in many ways content is the primary and it really comes back to the exposure of the content. So the next step when we look at around personalized. Now when, when I use the term personalized, I am setting that as an interim term between differentiated and adaptive. And it's important because there is an interim step before you get to the adaptive learning platforms where you're talking about an, a, a really strong algorithm driving that. So personalized learning really is a rules-based approach using a decision tree. It can include a pretest leading to a test out strategy or a customized learning plan. But what it starts off with is when you look at individual learners, they come into something like a test engine and so they take a test. They're able to test their knowledge. A pretest is a common concept. And based on their performance on that test, the mastery of the content uh, based on their, you know, what they got right or wrong in the test, then you actually serve up a, a system that says, hey, pass this content uh, tied to these content blocks. And so, for example, Learner 1 mastered uh, Section E but needed to take A, B, C, and D. In Learner 2's case, they've mastered uh, Section B but, for example, would need to a, take A, C, D, and E. So if we were thinking about Alan, again, he's a new seller in a banking experience but new to the company. Uh, he needs to learn about the bank's products and services to begin. Alan completes a pretest, and then based on his performance, he receives a customized learning path. And so, in looking at, for example, the products, you know, with his prior knowledge in industry, he probably knows a lot about existing products from other banks that he may have worked with. And so, he tested out of four of the seven product modules uh, for maybe this particular organization had some unique uh, service and offerings which were new to him, and so he was is able to kind of go out and pick up just that. So Alan has a customized path in the sense that based on what he's demonstrated his knowledge, he then gets content. The importance around this one is thinking that he's going to have a more streamlined experience perhaps than when you really look at uh, somebody else who has to take the entire, as we talked about, the differentiated side with this. Now the importance here again is when you're thinking about that test engine, that test engine is up front, it's before I get to the content, so it's I'm taking that test in the beginning and then based off of that I get the content coming back to it. So it, it doesn't really step into the next layer of what I would call spaced learning, so it's a more of an early event with it and then you're out of the test engine, you're dropping into an LMS where you're getting your content. So when you look at personalized learning, this is really starting to get into an assessment first strategy. And the learner experience will vary in, time, in terms of time and content exposure and this is important because that's really where you get to that return on that investment around reduction in time. There is a strong tie between the test and the associated content chunks. It is supported through an LMS and if the LMS has a test engine, it's through that LMS and the test engine or if uh, you need a standalone test engine. But the idea is that you have to have a rigorous way of being able to do test analysis, item analysis to be able to look at how strong uh, your tests really are because um, not only does it you know, require an accurate mapping of the role, the task, or the competency, but it's also dependent on the quality of the tests and the items. Because instead of depending on that says, hey, this population will be exposed to this set of content, which has been historically a confidence in the system. We know at least they saw the content and they took the test, and historically that's been how we were comfortable saying yes, that gets to a level of, of confidence that they can perform in the field. Now you're looking at when a test out strategy, you no longer guarantee that everybody sees the same content. You really have to go back to the quality of the testing strategy that you're putting in place because it really assumes that when you have folks test out of the content, they truly do not need to see the related content with that. Which brings us to the third step in this when you're really talking about adaptive learning. And this is really where we've seen the greatest advancements in this and it's really built on a platform that's driven by an, an engine, an, an algorithm that really is looking at a, a massive data, using information that it knows on a variety of factors to be able to serve up a series of uh, structured items as well as the content associated with that. 
So when you look at this here in the middle, you talk about the individual learnings are coming into the adaptive learning platform or the system. Now, all of these adaptive learning platforms do integrate or participate with the LMS, but what's important to understand is that uh, you may register and you may have your learning plan in the LMS, but when you're going into this, you're, you're actually going into an adaptive learning platform where you're going to take uh, participate in a test integrated strategy. So you're going to be served up a series of questions and then based upon uh, you know individual performance or the performance of others in your peer group, you're either going to get um, a combination of immediate feedback, immediate remediated feedback, or you're going to be served up a series of questions or, or new questions as you go. And it's really that's where the engine comes in to look at the overall um, performance and the predictive to adapt the learning path of what they're going to see next. And it's really driven by this, uh, the analytics and that, that algorithm that's behind it. So for example, if we look at Alan, he's a new seller, he has bank experience but is new to the bank, he launches the adaptive learning module and starts to really answering test questions related to the products. Now based on his performance, his learning path will adjust. He'll either get similar questions, he'll get different questions, he'll get feedback on the interim items or he will get uh, remediated content. But basically he will continue through and he'll get feedback on how he's performing. And then additionally, one of the rich things that you're seeing on a lot of the adaptive learning platforms is how you're able to provide analytics for those that are invested in their performance to see how Alan and the others in the population are really performing on those individual questions. The additional feature I think that's really important to talk about when we're thinking through adaptive learning is the fact around this ability to do more spaced learning. So whereas we were in the um, personalized, we kind of did a bulk of a test up front, had a preset, and then we had a set curriculum or a custom curriculum after that. The adaptive learning platform can space the learning over time and start to anticipate or work in when folks might begin to forget that content and be able to serve up a new question in the system to be able to have them integrated into answering that question to remember uh, to not only be represented with content, but the opportunity to interact and answer a question and then receive feedback on how they're performing. So there is an extra feature within that which really comes into that advanced uh, spacing feature when you win that. So now let's take a look at it again, and this is an assessment throughout strategy. It really is not just, again, like it was up front for personalization, but it's a throughout, it's embedded, it's the core of the experience. It will vary in terms of time, content exposure. One of the rich features is you can actually do this much more, uh, I'd say, seamlessly over a period of time. The content is integrated into the overarching assessment framework. So instead of having discrete learning pieces outside, so a test first coming in and, and getting content separate, the content really is integrated into the platform. And it is supported through an LMS, an adaptive learning platform. And it does require a different approach when you're thinking, and a different approach when you're thinking about design and development processes. So you have to think differently because you're going to chunk the content in really small pieces to tie down to the item level of what you're testing with so that you can get granular, not only uh, granular uh, report outs, but you also need to be able to map the content and the performance down to the specific points. So when you're designing your content, we're not seeing large swaths of content being developed from end to end. You have to think differently how you're chunking it so it can be put into the system. And again, the success really is dependent on the quality of the adaptive engine, the test items, and a mass of data. Again, that's one of the big feeders in here is that you're looking at large populations of data to really feed that algorithm to make those critical decisions on how to adjust the learning path as you're moving forward. So again, really thinking about the difference between differentiated, personal, uh, personalized, and adaptive are critical. And these have been all key questions that our partners that have started to explore this. It's been critical for them to really understand because there are great returns on an investment in an adaptive learning system, but there, we are talking about a systemic shift in the way in which you're thinking about um, not only serving up your content, but the way in which you're testing and you're actually leveraging some analytics to know more about your population and how they're performing. So I know we had a couple of minutes here and wanted to be able to answer some questions. I hope that Kayla is okay and if she's coming back up, but uh, Hi, can I... You
Ah, there we are. You're back. Good. Okay. So I am back. Yeah. Sorry, my internet decided to take a nap and turn off. So I'm 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 here. So um, yeah, if you want to move to the Q and A, that sounds great. So thanks, um, Matt, for that great presentation, and, and thanks everyone for your, your patience and that little technology hiccup. Um, those were some great insights for kicking off our Learning Trends series, and um, fortunately, I was actually able to catch the whole thing, so that was great. We have a few minutes left, so as a reminder, if you do have a question for Matt, just um, enter it in the Q&A module at this time, and um, I'll feed those to him here in just a second. Uh, obviously, he covered a lot in about 15 minutes, and so if you have more to discuss with Matt, we encourage you to continue the conversation with him beyond today's session. His contact information is actually available in this deck, and we'll, we'll flip that slide here in just a second. Um, and we'll also be sending everyone a link to a follow-up blog post where he'll be addressing some of today's key takeaways. I'd also like to remind everyone that the recording and the slides from today will be sent to the email address you provided along with that blog post. So with that, it looks like there are a few questions that have come in, so I'll go ahead and get started with those. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, the first one is, what are some providers with adaptive learning platforms? Uh, so there's actually quite a few uh, providers in the space, and several are, I would say, emerging. Uh, but there's been some longtime players in the space. Uh, I know that, for example, uh, Knowledge Factor has a, a platform as well as Area 9 Learning. Uh, Pearson's also been in the space for quite a long time with that as well. Uh, and so we've definitely, uh, our partners, these are some of the key um, adaptive learning partners that have been explored with that. I would also look at uh, some of the gamification platforms have really strong adaptive learning engines underneath them, and that really is the key for their gamification component. So when you look at M-Level or Axonify, they do have a backbone of an adaptive learning component that really ties into that space learning. So there are several players that are coming to the table with that. Um, you know, and I think of um, the higher ed space has been, I'd say, in the adaptive learning space a lot longer. Uh, there are players that are coming to to uh, out of that space as well. So there are several, and I could tell you a couple more, but I know that uh, more will even show up in the next six months. That is very true. We have a lot of questions coming in. They're coming in pretty quickly, and I know we are at 20 minutes um, after the hour. So we're going to go ahead and kind of get through a few more of these. Um, if you don't mind hanging on the phone, if not, Matt will be addressing them in a follow-up blog post, so no worries if you have to drop off the call. Uh, the next one is, is there a maturity model that a company would go through to move from differentiated to adaptive learning, or is it realistic to just jump into adaptive learning? Wow, and I think there's a lot of factors that play into that. I think, um, yeah, it's a, it's a really complex question to answer because it not only includes, uh, I, I would say, the culture of learning in the organization, but there's also a technical uh, component to a technology component to that. Um, I would say some folks that don't have legacy systems could jump into adaptive learning right, right away. Uh, some folks that are more established uh, learning organizations, that change to an adaptive learning system may be more significant. Uh, but that's not a hard and fast rule. There are lots of ways to uh, look and solve that. But as with any change management challenge, you've got to get a look at all the factors related to that. All right. I like this one. Um, there is a critique of adaptive learning that by adjusting difficulty and making material easier at times, we're hurting the learners by taking away their ability to try and fail. Do you have any um, thoughts on this? Well, and I think I think it's important to put into context that adaptive learning can be powerful, but it's uh, it's not a a cure all for absolutely everything. And I think there are different types of learning outcomes or learning goals that you're trying to achieve. Uh, but but in a sense, there are places where it is critical to have uh, what I would say failure based learning uh, to play a critical role within that. And I would say that's that is that's not completely outside the realm of adaptive learning. With that, uh, I do want to go back to the point. It's, it's a great Great question, and I think that's where the data and the research on the effectiveness of this is really comes into play. And we are seeing a lot of the platforms coming out, and we are seeing applications of it. But there is some good research that's emerging to say what is the uh, efficacy of an adaptive learning system. And so, while I might be able to throw a general opinion, I would want to yield to actually what the research is showing. And I'd say there there are folks that are bringing together um, good studies on this very topic that I'm hoping to see come out here. In 2017 to share more, uh, more, more. Uh, what I would say, evidence-based information around uh, the efficacy and the applications where they are successful. 
So that question goes back to the, um, some of those suggested platforms that you mentioned. But uh, someone asked, what can we do if we don't actually have access to any of these platforms? Well, I think you can still uh, work to other strategies because you can still integrate it even a test first strategy, even at a course level. Uh, you may not have uh, server side ability to do uh, test item analysis across the population, but you could uh, put a router, what I call it, maybe a, a router or a, a short decision tree in the beginning for a body of knowledge up front that you can do at the beginning of a course. You can do it at the course level. It doesn't give you as much rigor as uh, data around, again, uh, item analysis, but it can be very effective to really start to triage on base level decisions and to getting better cuts of information for certain populations. So there are some uh, shorter, easier ways to do that, but again, those systems are also, the more complex you get into those, um, the bigger challenge of the maintenance factor on the back end comes in. I don't want to go more than five minutes over, so I'm going to go ahead and take one more question. There are, there are several more that came in. If you have any questions, though, do please enter them in the Q&A module. We'll make sure to compile them um, and, and um, put everything in the blog post that we'll be sending out to you to make sure that everybody's questions are answered, and then everyone will be able to see the questions that were asked in Matt's responses. So this last question is, how would you connect scenario-based uh, scenario learning and compare it to adaptive learning? So scenario-based, I don't think that they are necessarily separate. You could incorporate scenario-based learning into an adaptive learning uh, strategy uh, with that. They're not mutually exclusive, uh, but uh, you do have to think about how you're setting up that uh, scenario so that you can get what I would say high confidence in the decisions that the folks are making, the feedback and the confidence in the final performance. So uh, you can incorporate those strategies into an adaptive learning approach uh, so they're not mutually exclusive. And I think one of the other big statements here, I know that we've only had like 20 minutes roughly to talk about this. I'm going to tell you, there's so much more to learn about this. There's a lot of um, you know, perspective on adaptive learning, and I recommend to continue the research on that. Uh, reach out to some of these partners uh, that I mentioned uh, you know, on some of these platforms, and they will be glad to share more information with you. It's something that we definitely help our partners begin to explore as we go through, but uh, a lot is rapidly changing in this space, and I think a lot for uh, in, in a good direction. Indeed. Well, this is a great way to kick off our Learning Trends series. So um, thank you again to today's speaker, Matt Donovan, and thank you to everyone who attended for your time and attention. We do hope that you'll join us again for our next session. It's uh, titled Creating Sticky Learning with Low-Cost Augmented Reality Solutions. And this is with Maya Roldan, and this will be held on January 19th. So a week from today, um, I wish you um, a good rest of your day, good rest of your week. And for GP Strategies, I am Kayla Rotz, and wish you all um, good luck in 2017.